yourself a lot. After those days, you go, shall I say, I went to Italy and I started my really great career, and the main career. Then you learn to really become a musician. After a singer, you have to put your instrument to the service of music, not only to the bel canto, to uh, the duty and uh, the line of music. Uh, then on, you really become, or you strive to become a musician. In other words, the main instrument of the orchestra. Yes. Which is probably, not probably, it is exactly the meaning of prima donna. Prima donna would be first woman. As you are a woman, you are the prima donna of the performance. And all this you were learning, really, at the time you first went to Italy? Yes, I learned that with uh, Maestro Serafin. I've always thought that was the one that was the lucky main thing man. that happened yes, to you. Yes, that was one of the many lucky things, and maybe the, the really lucky things, because he taught me that there must be an expression, there must be a justification. He taught me exactly the depth of music, and this was the, the justification of music. That is where I really, really uh, drank all I could from this man. He was, after all, the first maestro you worked with in he Italy. He was the first, and I'm afraid... Uh, I'm afraid that he's the last of those kind of maestri. Very few Italian conductors had a more distinguished career than did Tullio Serafin, and perhaps none apart from Toscanini, more influence. His career spans the entire century short of a year or two. His time at La Scala alone spread over 40 years, and at Covent Garden with some gaps over 53 years. He conducted at the Met in Chicago, in South America, and he was artistic director in Rome from 1934 to 43, perhaps his most distinguished and uncompromising period. Above all, Serafin was a singer's conductor. Uh, what I learned from Serafin was that you must serve music because music is so enormous and can envelop you into such a, uh, a state of, uh, of perpetual anxiety and torture but it is our first and main duty. He always found a reason for something. What he said impressed me was, when one wants to find a gesture, when you want to find how to act on stage, all you have to do is listen to the music. The composer has already sought, seen to that. If you take the trouble to really listen with your soul and with your ears, and I say soul and ears because the mind must work, but not too much also. Uh, you will find every gesture there. And it's so true, you know. In fact, acting production is a musical thing in opera. That's what it, it becomes. Is the basis of the music. It is all one reflex, usually. It is one enormous reflex with many, many reflexes put together. Which comes back to what we were saying before that. By the time you're on stage dealing with music as a... Uh, no more an amateur musician but a uh, professional serious musician you must have no, no more mi uh, surprises you in fact have had uh, in your early career in Italy something approaching surprises but not uh, on the stage more in choice of repertory weren't you engaged to sing Wagner and find yourself singing Bellini <laughs> I don't mean by mistake but in the course of the season well, it was nearly by mistake. I mean, it's by a miracle, shall we say. Yes, it's true. I was doing uh, Valkyria, which was uh, my second year in, uh, at the Fenice of Venice. And I remember there was a, uh, a great, uh, shall we say, uh, an influenza fever mm -hmm. or uh, epidemic. And they were without a uh, soprano for Puritani of Bellini. And uh, poor old Serafin was exhausted, desperate. He couldn't find this singer and that singer. We didn't know what to do in the evening, so uh, we were just, uh, you know, sight-reading the role and playing around with, this, with the music. So his wife uh, heard me singing the aria, sight-reading the aria. And she came in. Uh, it was in his apartment, uh, Master Serafin's apartment. She says, uh, I said, will you do me a favor? When my husband comes in, in fact, she didn't call him my husband, she says, Tullio comes in. Uh, she says, will you please sing that for him? I said, well, it'll please him and make him happier, yes. In fact, I did when he came back. 
never said a word. The next day, 10 o'clock in the morning, was after my, already my first performance of Valkyria. I think the next day, or the evening, I think the same evening we had the, the second Valkyria. And uh, I was called on the telephone, uh, please put your robe and come down, or come up, whatever it was. Maestro Serafin. I said, Maestro, I'm not washed up, it'll take me about half an hour. I said, no, 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 come down the way you are. Of course, we wouldn't even say no to it. It was sort of a veneration for the Maestro mm. then. And uh, I went down, and he said, sing. I said, what? Sing what you to uh, sang to me yesterday. There was the director of the theater, Katozzo then, and uh, I said, uh, anyway, I was forced to sing the aria, and uh, sight read, of course, which was the second time, the third time I sight read it. I heard them talking, and he says uh, to me, well, look, Maria, you're going to do this role in a week. I said, I'm going to do what in a week? He says, you're going to sing Puritania in a week. I undertake that you study it. I can't, I have three more Valkyrias. I can't do it. It's ridiculous that I sing Puritani. He says, I guarantee you that you can. So I thought to myself, well, if a man like Serafin, who is no child, knows his job, can guarantee me a thing like that, I will be no fool to say no. And I said, well, my, so my best I can do. More than my best, I cannot promise. If I manage to learn the part with my performances of Valkyria and the time it passed, Valkyria, not Siglinde, Brunhilde, Brunhilde, I point out. <laughs> and he says, all right, I guarantee you that, and you guarantee me that you try. That's good enough for me. So I said, well, inside of myself, I said, if they're crazy enough to think that, then I, I was still young, and you know, being young, you have to uh, gamble. experience in my schooling days came handy yes. because I was al al already prepared for all the tricks. You could but have shocks, the but not basic, surprises. No surprises and no shocks even because you see uh, Wagner is much easier to sing frankly. In a way yes of course. In every way. Mm. When I used to sing Isolde and I used to sing uh, Brunhilde there was no comparison with the Bellini roles or even the Donizetti because they're much less exposed mm -hmm. and much less difficult but the basis is the schooling of bel canto to sing whatever you sing 